Okay, to follow on from the tracking video, right, whenever we're talking about body position in relation to the contact, okay, all of these processes of the tackle, okay, are about giving us, I suppose, giving our players confidence that they want to put themselves in that position that's going to actually benefit them in making the tackle. Okay, so when we talk about body position, for me, it's about staying tall, all right. I know that might contradict what generally you'd say, but this is staying tall in relation to the point until you actually need to make the tackle. Okay, so if I to put it simply, if I have an attacker that out over there at five, six yards is coming at me, and if I put myself down in that lower position, okay, I'm in a compromised position automatically. I'm not going to be going forward, okay, because I'm going forward, but I'll be sitting on my heels and I'm putting myself in a position to be beaten very easily. Okay, so that's what I mean by staying tall, getting our chest out, being as big as we can in the approach, all right, in our tracking phase. Okay, if we do that, we generally have our weight moving forward around the front of our toes. Okay, like I said, if I dip more often than not, I'm not going to be dipping and getting onto my front of my toes when I'm far away from tackle. I'll be sitting back on my feet. But again, staying tall brings about that head being in a good swivel, upright position. Okay, so I can move right, I can move left. Again, I'm not getting low sort of a lot of time before the tackle. I'm staying tall on my approach. Okay, and this is the reason why we want to try and do that. So we talk about the why. Why do we want to drop our height just before contact? Okay, if we get tracking right, okay, we stay tall and do all the rest of it. If we drop our height just before contact, we're actually minimizing the room for error straight away. Okay, because we think about it again, we talk about the defender over there. If I run around in that low position, I'm not really putting myself in a good position to make a proper tackle. I'm generally going to be making a passive tackle, which isn't bringing about the confidence that we need, all right, in order to help our players realize that they stay tall, they get their tracking right, they do all the processes, they're going to make a good tackle, and they're going to most importantly be confident. Okay, so as I approach the tackle, I get my tracking high, I've got my, uh, my staying tall, I just want to drop that split second before the contact. Okay, and I know that might go good, again go against people, but we're going to result in a lot more accuracy in our tackling. All right, because we're actually getting closer. We're getting closer and we're going to actually be on the weight forward and we're actually going to then be able to punch through the tackle. Again, with all these points in relation to the tracking process, when we go outside and actually look at the breakdown of various drills or the levels within it, okay, we should see some sort of understanding being formed. All right, at the moment, obviously, it's just words on the board. Okay, just to recap, staying tall, big chest, okay, being confident about what we're doing pre-tackle. Getting our weight forward, again, is going to help us in terms of meeting force with force. Keeping our head up, get our head in a nice neutral position on a swivel so we're not compromised. And then we just drop the height, split second, chop them down to the floor, or make a dominant tackle depending on the tackle situation. Alright, so hopefully that makes sense and gives us some clarity, but we'll go outside and have a look and see how that works. Okay, so this one, the previous one, we looked at the tracking. Today we're going to look at the body position. All right, so the first one's going to be staying tall, chest up, and uh, keeping our weight forward. So it's one of the ones, um, we're going to get wheel on a pad. All right, so we're just going to work on that close pommel, all right, where we actually get across and actually get that shoulder, chest impact and staying tall through the contact. Okay, so we've done the, the tracking work. All right, so wheel's going to stand in front of Jack, nice and close. Yeah. I'm just going to get Jack again, thinking staying tall, hitting with our chest, hitting and sticking, and then trying to keep that weight forward, all right? So the first couple, I'm just going to do two on each shoulder, literally just hit and pummel. Okay, chest up, head up, staying tall, hit and pummel, whenever you're ready. Okay, good. Don't even need to chase your feet just yet. Just fall into it. Nice. Good. And again, let's fall into it. Good, all right, so we're just looking again how he extends his feet and through and hips through the contact. Okay, he's just getting very excited, which is good to hear. Okay, we'll swap it around, do it off the other angle just so we see, if we do it in in behind. Yeah, so we'll get you out there, you going. Yeah. Okay, so just keeping an eye on what we talked about previously is our getting across that tackle. So this time, we do the same one where he's actually probably trying to get to an outside. Jack's gonna do the same, he's gonna step across, hey, staying tall, chest up, and punching through the target. There you go. Good, nice and simple, that's it. Again. Yeah. Same again. Again, it's a hit and stick, good. Punch itself through. Okay, Jack facing away from the camera. 
Okay, so one thing we talked about, we're happy enough with is how he's staying tall, how he's hitting an impact and up through the tackle. Okay, we're going to talk about how we want him to keep his head up at all times, all right? So when he actually makes that tackle, I'm going to be the coach, I'm going to, in behind, I'm going to hold up a cone, he's just going to make sure he's staying up and through the tackle because we don't want to get in this position if Will is taking me on where I nose dive and I lose my peripheral and put my head A into a bad position, but I can get beaten quite easily. All right, so I'm just going to hold the cone up in behind, he's going to keep an eye on me. Go! Keep your head up and drive through. What? Nice, good. Yeah. All right, cool. Perfect, okay. So just making sure we've got chest up, hit, stick, pummel, okay. Now we're gonna focus on that weight forward. So I'm gonna get your side on again. Mm -hmm. All right, so I wanna make sure when we are getting that chest forward, our weight's coming forward, okay? If I do make that hit, I wanna make sure I'm chasing up with my feet at all times. Okay, so we're kind of coming together into that tackle, but we're chasing our feet, all right? And making sure we're getting our weight forward and we're actually having that forward momentum into the tackle. Okay, so will you come across a bit more? Good. Okay, so we want to basically, when we're tackling in this position, dominant, all right, we want hips to hips, we want to basically control the, the attacker's hips. So we want to make sure we're closing that space up so we can't get away. So really close that space up on the hips. So hit and get tall, chase your feet, hips to hips. Yeah, good. So hit, square and up, like square and up. Okay, so if I was to take one with Willie on, if I show him a right shot, what a, I want him to come in here. Okay, I'm in that position where I hit up and I want to try and really squeeze and chase. Okay, one of the things that I'll get Jack to do if I put a, say if I put two bibs in behind Willie, throw them in behind your shorts, okay, or wherever, it forces that player to actually say he has to come out with the two bibs. All right, so I have to get him to grip. All right, when he's finishing the tackle, he can release, but he's got to find the two, the two bibs, one in either hand. So hit, really get up high. Okay, good, same again. But vice versa, if, say if Jack did one, he just put the bibs in behind and we just keep the reps high. Same again, chest high, get high. There we go, good, all right. The difference is when Jack's driving up, he's controlling his hips and he's controlling the opposition's hips as well. Okay, any questions on any of them? All right, feel free to, again, just get in touch. Okay, so we're gonna finish up with that one. Uh, we're gonna swap out a couple of pads and we'll see you in two seconds. Okay, swap. Okay, looking at the, again, looking at the body position, obviously this time, the previous one, we kind of a front on pummel is what we call it, which is a chest to chest kind of dominant tackle. Now we've got the sausage in, okay, great height for practicing. Um, so what we want in this one here, okay, so it's gonna be, we're looking at body position, we wanna look at that drop and then that impact through, okay? We're looking to try and take away any sort of momentum, okay? We're just looking to make sure we can actually generate that um, foot speed and through the tackle, okay? So we're not taking a massive run up because we take a run up, especially when we're coaching kids as we go to get old. The closer we can have it, the more confidence we're gonna get in the actual tackle itself. The tackle happens in or end a foot from the bag or the foot from the man. All right, so we get, Willie will hit one, just bounce back to his feet, Jack will hit one, so on and so forth. Okay, so, just offset, yeah, yeah, where, yeah, wherever you want, HI, offset slightly. Jack will call the drop, you'll drop, and you just want to see that acceleration, the foot position straight through the contact. Okay, so just, yeah. Good, okay, perfect, reload. It's fine, load the time. Drop. Good, okay, so making sure every time we, before we come into the tackle, all right, we're generally always going to be high and there's going to be that split second, we need to drop our height and then impact it into the tackle. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, well, drop. Good. Keep focus, yeah, yeah, so even on that one, Willie just reminded himself to actually, he fell off, so he fell off by not actually finishing the tackle, which is the, the grip or the grab as well. Drop. Good. Okay, so on now with feedback, what are we thinking is the most important thing? Uh, getting in nice and close, dropping when you drop, like not to kind of like drop like that. 
Okay, perfect. So it's okay. I'm coming back from that tracking. All right, that we did nose diving. We don't want nose diving. Okay, it doesn't allow us to actually hit up and through the contact again. Same as what we did before. All right, we'll just have Will if he tackles. Okay, he's just going to hold up a couple of fingers. No, sorry, if Jack tackles. He's going to hold up a couple of fingers. All right, and he's going to have to re re count them. So basically, he's impacting. He's staying through the tackle. Okay. So we'll see it here. Yep. Three we got. It doesn't matter about the number, but just once we constantly keep that head up and through. Good, okay. When we nose dive, okay, it just means we're we're dropping our height too soon potentially. Okay, so we got one more. Jump. All right, perfect, okay. Okay, just moving on from the body position, obviously we did a straight sort of front on pummel, shoulder contact, dominant tackle. Generally in a game, it's gonna be hitting the moving body. All right, so this is a great one. So we've done the static one on this one. How to make it a bit more dynamic and applicable to the game itself, we're just gonna drag and move, okay? The tendency is when we drag, we have a moving target. Okay, remembering we actually wanna make the tackle in and around the vicinity of the pad. All right, so it's not a case of if I said go to William and he's coming forward and he tries to make the tackle there, so he's in that position there and I drag it last minute or move my feet he's nose diving he's not tracking his feet he's not going to make a good tackle okay so he's going to continue with his footwork all the way up until i drop the pad or i move the pad okay so just for example we get going he's going to track forward 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 i move to the side okay and it's just how he can how long he can or sorry how long he can stay in that tall position before he has to react to the contact okay so we get jack in there to to drag it down Yeah, well, yeah, you usually think you're going to plant and you just nose dive, whereas you want to take that extra sort of step. And it forces you to take the extra step because the pad's constantly moving, okay? So whenever Jack's ready, he's going to move. As soon as he moves to the side, yeah, you can chop it down, good. So it can either be a release or when you feel like you're in a position to really get that good connection and good impact. So generally, anytime we are moving, all right, we can always, as defenders, take an extra step, always into contact, okay? An extra step is always best. As soon as he moves to the side, yeah, good. Okay, because we're looking for that perfect impact tackle all, at all times, and by Jack lunging or William lunging further away from the pad, you're probably not gonna get that impact on the shoulder, you're probably gonna be more arms. Okay, we've got one more each. Yeah, good. See on that one, what did you hit first with? Uh, shoulder. What did you grab first with? Oh my God. Yeah, okay, so we want to make sure we constantly go on chest and shoulders and then wrap, okay? Right. Yeah, well, that's perfect. Did we talk to it? We've just taken an extra step, go again. As soon as he moves aside, yeah, good, perfect, okay, we can hear automatically, the cue would be for us as coaches to hear that, that noise, all right, we got that good thump or that impact, okay, it's generally a good indicator. All right, so hopefully that, that's clear again, any sort of questions, but always kind of generally as coaches, we want to try and improve the confidence of the player, so try and look at it from a static position, and then look to develop um, the skill itself to a bit more, something that uh, is a bit more applicable to the actual match itself. Thanks.